Now, welcome to another edition of Revealing God. I'm your host, my Victor. I'm excited to be with you. Today, we're talking about a very powerful message which the Lord laid in my heart. And He first gave me this message last year, but uh, it's one to share again because it's talking about the future. So, it's titled The Future, uh, the 2024 and beyond. Because God has a plan and His plan will always come to pass. You know, the, we are, the scriptures are given for a particular reason. If you look at um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 17, when um, Paul tells Timothy, all scriptures are given by the inspiration of God and they are profitable for first doctrine. Doctrine in the sense that it's information, information about the past and about the future. So he went on to talk about it uh, for reproof, We're talking about evidence, for evidence and for correction and instruction to righteousness. But today we're talking about the prophecies of the scripture of God. That's one part of the scripture, not just history, not just teachings of doctrine, but of prophecy of what will happen. And that's what, if you go to that scripture, that's what you see. The, that it's, you know, that one of the major parts of the scripture is about. And many of the prophecies that are in the scripture have been fulfilled, and some are still meant to be fulfilled. And Jesus even fulfilled many of them during his coming. And he's yet to fulfill one great one that. Is his second coming, and you know, many people have been saying, Ah, Jesus has been taking so long. Why, you know, he said it will come since I don't believe it anymore, you know. But the Bible says the Lord is not slack on signing his promises, but his delay is so that all men might come unto the understanding of the truth, unto repentance. So, God's delay is so our people can be having an opportunity to be saved. Because many people are not saved. I, 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 you know, there's a research I did, and I saw 150,000 people die daily. And out of that, those people, many are not saved. In fact, it's one to 8,000 people that are only saved. So I imagine the percentage of people that die and go to hell. And I was always looking at the social media, you know, real that was going, and I saw some elderly people that were talking about, you know, I uh, live my life, and they never talk about God, they never knew God, but I go, hold, I remember living about 60, 70, I live a good life, trying to give points about how they live a good life, but they are not prepared for eternity. But like I don't know, Jesus is coming very soon, and that's why we need to know, because he's actually given prophecies of what will happen, and we know that we are certainly we are settling in a time period that is very close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the purpose of God is to be fulfilled like the Lord. God has always wanted to fill this earth with His glory. And that's why the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 or 28, it told man, when he after created man, the Bible said, blessed him, and told him to replenish, refill the head. And that was the purpose of God because Adam um, and Eve were meant to. We populate the earth with the people with the glory of God upon the earth. Because God wanted the earth to be filled with his glory. That's why God created the earth. But, you know, right from time, Satan has wanted to corrupt the things of God upon this earth. And that's why I believe the earth was found in a void state and in darkness. Because God had to destroy whatever was there, which Satan had already corrupted. And we know that God had told the man to replenish the earth. That means refill the earth. And when the Hebrew chapter 11 verse 3, say God by his word refill. Frame the earth, that means he recreated the head. So that's what God did. And now you see sand, you see water was existence after, uh, when God created the head first. He didn't have to create the water or sand because he had already created the head. And those things were there. So he only had to recreate you know, mankind and the human life and the structure of human life and the things that give life. But now, it started, Satan also corrupted man, Adam and, true, Adam and Eve. He caused them to sin, and when they sinned, they, he corrupted them, and they lost the nature of God, and he took possession of the earth. And he went to fall in Genesis chapter 6 to try to corrupt the DNA, the structure of mankind, so that they can become giants and not the way God had to actually created them to be in the physical, after even destroying their spiritual nature. But that's why God had to destroy the head of the flood. Then we see God had to, you know, call a man, Abraham, to out of his father's house and promise him to make him a father of all nations. So God wanted to, through Abraham, create a set of people or bring a generation that will fill the head with his glory. And as they went on, you see that, you know, the Israelites, that Abraham, through produced Isaac, Isaac, Jacob, and that produced the 12 tribe of Israel, which went into Egypt and later became 
the children of Israel that were in bondage in Egypt. And when they came out of Egypt, the Egypt was not left them. They were meant to meet, their, you know, enter their promised land in maybe within a month. It's actually, eleven day journey, but maybe God wanted to remove the debt and the the, 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 the you know set of mindset they had from Egypt, the slavery mindset they had of Egypt and the worship of idols out of them. But they got stuck in the in the desert and they started worshiping idols. And God said to you know, um, Moses, when they had seen that God made a golden calf and worship it, just after God had given them the Ten Commandments, which is the first is not to worship any God or bow down before any God other than Him. And they broke that immediately, and God, you know, tried to punish them. And But Moses was pleading, and God said in Numbers 14 that He has had him, and that as long as he lives, the head will be filled with his glory. So, in other words, God's plan is to fill the head with his glory. And the children of Israelites, they failed in that part because they disobeyed God. And they had to stay in the desert for you know, 40 years because they rebelled when God said, go take the promised land. And they were saying, no, the, there are giants there. They rebelled against God's word. And God let them all that rejected his word perish in the desert for 40 years. So, they delayed their promise. And until they got into the promised land 40 years after. But well, after that, you see that God still came to the Israelites in the time when Jesus came. Jesus, when Jesus came, he came, appeared to the, the Jews, the Israelites at that time. But the Bible says in Luke chapter 19 that he had to leave them because they rejected him, they did not recognize him as the Messiah. And the Bible, he said, he has living. It, you know, it, it, they do not recognize the time that they are here, and therefore we will live in them until they say, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. So that's why the Jews also missed out in the time of their visitation, because they do not recognize the time of their visitation when Jesus came. So the, the, the time when they should have been enjoying the deliverance and salvation of Jesus Christ from the Messiah, that Jesus, that time is not delayed because now he said it. That the gospel is not taking to the Gentiles, and the church Gentiles now are the ones having the gospel and preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and manifesting manifest the gift of the Spirit of God. So, Gentiles are those that are non Jews, and those are the people that God has taken the gospel to because the Jews rejected Jesus Christ. So, what God did to the Gentiles was to establish the church, but the church is not a Gentile church. The church it should be the amalgamation of the Jews and the Gentiles. God, the Bible says in um, Colossians chapter 2, you see there, and Ephesians chapter 2, I think verse 14 and 15, talking about God breaking the middle wall of partition and um, destroying the immunity which was in the ordinances of the law. So God, through his death and resurrection, broke the walls of partition, causing the Jews and the Gentiles, joining them in one body so that they can, in true one spirit, serve God. So the church is not meant to be a gender church. It's meant to be a, the, the gathering of every one that believes in Jesus Christ, both Jews and Gentiles. So that is what the church is about. But it's predominantly the Jews, but the, um, it's predominantly the Gentiles because the Jews still today are blinded that the Messiah has come, that Jesus has come. So they don't know. Few know, but many don't know now. So therefore, they have delayed their promise. But now the church is also giving a tax to go into the world and preach the gospel of creature and, you know, be a light to the world. But as I said before, God has, you know, had a plan to fill the earth with his glory. And the church is also failing at this time because I was, in my time of worship last year, I about 2022, towards the end of 2022, I think in November, God told me to write a message telling the church about the judgment is bringing upon the earth, and starting with the church, because they had been, you know, the, the church has not really fulfilled its part according to what God wants to do to be the light in the generation. There are churches that are really, you know, beaming out the light of God, but many are not. We can't compare the percentage of failures to the, the procedure of um, success. There are a lot of failures in the body of Christ because many have compromised, many are not preaching the right doctrine, they are preaching false doctrines or doctrines that will pacify the flesh of people and make sure that they don't have enemies, enmity or 
you know, they don't want anything to do with, you know, speaking the truth that is that my son asks. Because the truth sometimes is asked, but it's the truth. We're talking about repentance, talking about judgment, talking about sin. Some people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about love, talk about peace, talk about things that make people comfortable. Talk about the, they don't want to talk about hell. They don't talk about the judgment of God. But these are the things that will sit some people right. Because many people are taking the judgment of God for granted. You know, the Bible, Jesus or in the scriptures says that that judgment will start from the house of God. That if the righteous cast the beast, they not talk about the sinners and the godly. Because judgment will start from the church. So God told me last year that that is 20, rather 20, I put 22, we're about the end of 2024. He told me that he's going to start judging, that he will not, he's going to take away his grace in a way that he, he grace of being patient. Because he has been patient to allow, you know, you know, the church to change, but they have not changed, they have not done what they want to do. So God wants to bring a judgment that will cleanse this, the, the, the leaders and the people that are injuring what is about to do with the church. Because God revealed to me about eight years ago that he wants to bring a great revival. And up to now, that great revival has not really happened as it should. We are just in pocket of it. There should have been a great revival in the world of Christ that shakes the whole world. Just like when Jesus was around, the whole world should have been shaken by a great revival. But Jesus, or God, is about to bring that to pass. And before he can do that, he has to bring judgment upon the, those that are in the room. Because I, I saw in a dream, um, the people in the church, they were sleeping. And all these people were moving around, brooding around, just like we did it when it was about to create the, the God was about to create the earth. So we were brooding around and running around, but the people were sleeping. And as long as we were sleeping, the Holy Ghost could not do anything. So God could not do anything. In fact, in the Bible talk about Jesus being limited when because of the unbelief of many people. People have delayed their promises. They have delayed the will of God and purpose of God for their life because they do not believe. We see that, as I gave an example, the Israelites are one, one of them. Even um, Abraham was, one, one, was uh, delayed his promise for about 25 years. God promised a child, but in the Bible says that he, not on the only way he received it. And the Bible says in Verse, um, Genesis chapter 17, God appeared to him and said, Walk before me and be thou perfect. To I am my, I establish my covenant. And when God was even saying that, He said, Oh, may the, may the, uh, may the promise be to Ishmael, his child, and gave a birth to Agar. But God said, No, the promise will be from Sarah, thy wife. And you name the child Isaac. And, you know, He still doubted God. That showed that His mindset was doubted. But I think of his life, but he came out in faith and finally got the promise. So many of us delay our promises. And before God does anything, because God wants to do something, and I, he has revealed to me, as I believe he has revealed to all that believers. The Bible says in the book of Amos that God does nothing except he reveals it to his servant, the prophet. So before God does things, he must reveal it. When he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he revealed it to to. Abraham, he said, I will do, would I identify from Abraham in um, Genesis chapter 18? So he revealed to Abraham, when he was about to destroy the head of the flood, he revealed it to Noah. And he, there's nothing God will do that he will not first bring in the knowledge or reveal it to, to his servants, the prophet, or to his uh, ministers. He reveal it to his ministers, those are seven of them. So that's how God operates. When God wants to destroy, and Jonah named it, and he revealed it to Jonah. Jonah was running away, and God said, go back and tell them. He said, if you don't want them, and I destroy it, then their sins will be upon your head. So God will always tell people so that they can have an opportunity to repent before his judgment comes. So God now, God has revealed to me as uh, last year that he's going to judge, begin a judgment upon the head, and it's going to take away, as I said, for his grace, and start to unleash the, you know, not restrict himself, or no, you know, God will not put a time of grace anymore, but will allow the process of his judgment to start beginning. And it's going to start with the church. God is going to judge people, institutions, and nations. And that's how God's going to do it. And it's going to start with the church. God's going to judge first brethren and ministers, and you start seeing this manifesting right from last year, God said it. And he also told me that there will be hard times ahead in the world. 
And we already know for when we look through scriptures that we, there are at times and there we had at times. Now, when we look at the book of Revelation, it talks about forces when the seal were broken to reveal uh, timelines of things, events that were happening. And the first horse came out was a white horse with a bow. And that's talking about, it's not the, the Jesus, that it's talking about a false prophet that false doctrine. And I've seen a lot of false prophets, a lot of false doctrine in the body of Christ. And false doctrine doesn't really come, doesn't necessarily have to be from someone that is not, was not a pastor. People that were pastors before, ministers before, they can get derailed and join the dark side. And many have seen some like that. And there are many out there that were walking the right path, but they've given themselves to the devil because of a loss for the things of this world. We need to be very careful because we might think that, oh, this guy started well, that's why you think God is foundation. He started well, he might still be on that path. No, he might not be on that path. Now, we are always judged by the Spirit, by the Word of God. Don't let anybody teach you anything that's out of the Word of God and out of the law, commandment of law. Very important. Don't follow the signs of the wonders alone. Follow the commandment of law. It, it should be the, 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 the sign that someone is following Jesus Christ. So, as I said, God's going to start judgment in the body of Christ, starting from the church. And it's going to transcend to other areas. Now, I've said that the, the world will experience hard times. And the first is deception, as I said, from the white horse I released. The second is about the red horse, which is going to be wars. And it was already experiencing wars. Then talk about the black horse, which is going to bring farming. So I believe. We're going to be seeing a greater level of farming and you know, we are, uh, of, of uh, you know, things that are happening. Because one thing that even leads to farming, two things that causes farming, basically, uh, through, throughout history, we wars. Because war in Russia and Ukraine is what leads into the shortage of food in the world. Now, that's grains. We're being short, there's shortage of grains in the world. Then, another thing that causes it is natural disaster. So, these things might probably cause farming now because we probably will see more wars coming in next year and beyond. And the Bible talks about the fourth um, horse being released, and the person that was on it was a man of, with a pale, with a pale horse. They're talking about the fourth horse being released as a pale horse, and this talks about a horse that is going to have control of kill one quarter of it. So that with wars, with famines, with pestilence, with um, animals. So it's talking about, you know, something that will happen and will affect a quarter of the world. And we might be seeing, you know, greater amount of wars. We've seen what the Middle East, I don't know if it's going to escalate, but I know there will be more wars in 2024. There will be famine and there will be more persecution of Christians. So we'll be seeing all this from, because the book of Revelation talks about this, going to be happening and it certainly will happen was the word of God will not fail because whatever thing that God says will accomplish it. And one time I saw because sometimes you think why is there wickedness in this world? Why is it? see I saw one time that you know when in my dream I saw as the kingdom of God was approaching, I saw that the powers of the heavens, the demonic powers in the heaven, in that because some the powers of the principality in the heavens, heavenly places that try to exalt themselves. And they, st they don't stay right on earth, but they got this place from the heavenly realm and they came down to earth because there was no room for them. The Bible says about this in Revelation 12 that Satan and his uh, angels were cast down to earth and say, Woe on the inhabitants on the earth because it's, yeah, his time is short and it's full of great wrath. So, the, because satanic beings are being displaced from the heavenly realm as the kingdom of God is approaching, there will be more demonic activities on the earth. And that's why we're going to be seeing more trouble, more torment, not because of only just judgment on the earth, but because there will be also wickedness because of the demonic powers that have been released upon the earth because they, are, because they are displaced from their heavenly places. So we've seen this, both of these two things will cause great havoc upon the earth. And this will lead to perilous times, according to the Bible says. And But it is those that trust in God. God Trusting God that we'll be able to make it. You know, you know, you see, but the Bible talks about in that very book of Revelation chapter six, it says when the horse, the black, black the horse the the black horse was released to cause farming, and he said, Don't touch your oil and the wine. In other words, to say the oil and the wine represent reserve something reserved for God's people. So God will reserve 
provision for his people in a time where there will be famine, there will be trouble. So it's only those that trust God that will only be able to make it in their time because if you don't start building your faith towards God, you don't trust trusting God for your provision, don't depend on the world system because many people are just hooked on the world system, depending on the world system to survive, to make it, they didn't live it. You need to trust God completely with your provisions, with your health, because the world system will fail and they will force people that will want to receive it to either embrace their doctrine, embrace their principles before they can receive it. So that will be what will be happening, and that's why many will fall away from faith. And that's one sign of you know the, of things that will happen. The scripture talk about will happen before Jesus comes. We say many will fall away before, from the faith before the Son of Perdition comes. You see that is Second Thessalonians chapter two. So we have to be very, very you know, build up our faith, trust more in Jesus more than ever, because this t- we cannot run away from this time. The Bible, you know, talks. Uh, Jesus was talking in the book of. Revelation chapter 3, the church of Philadelphia, he was telling them that, you know, that it will, because of Kevin's word, it will keep them in the time of temptation that will come upon the whole world. So there'll be a t- trying time in the world, and we are going to experience it very soon. And, you know, God has told me this will happen. One year has passed, we've seen a lot of things that is happening, but next year will be even harder because it will not get easier. It will get harder for the world. But those in Christ, God will preserve. So I pray God will preserve you as you follow him and you build yourself, you know, trust more in him. So I want to say, if you're not giving your life to Christ, you know, I said, Jesus Christ, that's the beginning of how to be, you know, start trusting God, having a relationship with God. So if you want to say short prayer, say Jesus from my life, then say this prayer, I believe it. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died and rose again for me. Forgive my sins and come to my life. I confess Jesus as my Lord and my personal Savior. Thank you for doing this in Jesus' name. Amen. So that prayer, I believe you're born again. So it's time to keep following Jesus. Read your Bible, pray, and take Jesus seriously so that you can build a relationship with him and be able to trust him. Because when you, you cannot trust who you are, you know. So the more you spend time with God, the more you will know him. This is the key for your change. This is the key for what you your, your, to receive the strength you need in the trying times ahead. Because there will certainly be trying times. Well, I pray for those out there that are sick, that have a need, that the hand of God will come upon them to deliver them from the powers of darkness that will heal and deliver them from all the works of Satan in Jesus' name. And those that have been persecuted by Satan, tormented by Satan, spirit of suicide, spirit of affliction, and they command them to go in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So that's all I have for you today. And this is a very important message. I want you to share and let people know the truth about what's about to unfold. People have been saying it, but God told me in 2022 this will start to happen. And we saw 2023 played out. Now 2024 will be worse. And I expect more wars, expect famines, expect more trying times in the world. And economies that people are depending on will shake, but trust in God like never before. Because this is what will guarantee you protection, safety, and provision. So I'll see you again. Know that God loves you. And it's coming very soon. So God bless you and tell somebody about Jesus Christ.